So today is July the 15th, 2024, time is 9 a.m. Affidavit of posting. This meeting was posted on July the 10th at 2.15 p.m. We will now do a roll call. I've got to stand down here so I can see the name tag, so please forgive me. But we're going to start right here. So we have Kenneth Cohen, President of Parkway Maintenance and Management. Tony Parker, Association Council. Maria Abdellis, Chairperson. Stacy Rush, Vice Chairperson. Christina Willis, Secretary. Katie Bodges, Board Member. Catherine Chambers, Board Member. Stephanie Rinaldi, Board Member. Hey, Stephanie. Betty Cassidy, Board Member. Hey, Nancy Burke, Board Hi, Member. Nancy. Adam Burley. Association Council. <laughs> make sure I said your name yeah, right. Yeah. And Mike Bernard, Treasurer, is absent today. And I am Kim Martin, the Assistant General Manager for Parkway Maintenance and Management. Well, thank you. I go on at 7 o'clock tonight, too, just so everybody knows. <laughs> So if you would please stand and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance and then a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you very much. Thank you. We have one agenda item today, and that is the management company presentations. So at this time, I will turn it over to the chairperson. It is early. I would like to welcome everybody this morning, and I thank you for understanding why we scheduled this meeting so early. There will be five presentations today prepared for us by top management companies in the industry. I ask that we maintain decorum during these presentations and thank you for understanding that only board members and Mr. Colin from Parkway Management will be asking questions after each presentation to assist us in choosing the company best suited to meet our needs here at the top of the world. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank Mr. Cullen, Head of Parkway Management, our Council, Monique Parker of Raven Parker Gurley, an expert in community association law seated to my right, and Adam Gurley, who works in commercial litigation, for being here today and for working with us so closely over the past month to ensure a smooth transition with no disruption to our community. As per Rule 22, Owners that submitted requests to speak by the deadline of 9 a.m. Friday, July 12th, may do so on agenda items, which today is one, selecting a new management company. There will be no other business today as this will be a lengthy meeting. However, you may certainly save any extraneous matters for the next meeting. The board understands that emotions were heightened due to uncertainty recently. I will encourage you to avoid rumors or making assumptions about the future of our community without checking with reliable sources. For instance, I understand many of you have appreciated Mr. Colin and his leadership all these years, as do I. I understand some did not understand the urgency in appointing a board per our bylaws to proceed with the day-to-day -day operations of this community. And no, no one is building pickleball courts on the golf courses. <laughs> At this time, I will ask Mr. Cullen if he would like to address the community and verify that he and Parkway resign and that no one was fired for the rumor mill before we begin. Mr. Cullen? Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, sir. It's been an honor and a pleasure to serve this community for as many years as we have been here, which is from inception. 
and the many years that I've been on the board, and it's a pleasure. I look forward to working for a successful transition to a new management company, and uh, hopefully we can engage the Parkway team in this as well, going forward. Thank you. And without further ado, I would like to present uh, Nicholas Palapas from Associa. from Associa, my team's coming up here. We're starting a little early. We thought we were going at 9.30, but we'll be ready a little early. So as long as you guys are okay with us starting a little early, we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm Nicholas from Associa Gulf Coast. Associa is the largest of the management firms. So we're the industry leader in everything from technology, human resources, maintenance, everything. So what we want to do is come into here today, introduce our team, tell you a little bit about what we offer, and then see if we'd be a good fit for the board here. Obviously it's a very large community, so you want a very large management company to take on all the facets that Parkway was handling. So first I'll just introduce my team. Go to the next slide. We have uh, Alex Turner, who's the president or vice president of sales nationally. We have Nick Bucola, who's the regional sales director. Here's my team coming in now. We thought we were starting at 9.30. This is Tam Noonan. She runs our client services. So when there's an issue with boards or uh, residents, Tam is the one who takes the lead on that. Insurance was obviously a big thing, so Tam had the lead on that this year. Next, I'll introduce the president of Associa Gulf Coast, Annette Bird, and vice president, Tara Drake. Again, we thought we were starting at 9.30. We got that. We'll take your time. Sure. So the next slide. Uh, community management is obviously what we focus on here. We can do it all. Financing and accounting, collections, elections and governance, which is obviously a huge thing for a large association like this. A small management firm would probably have a very difficult time just running your election. Associa does communities larger than yours. So handling your election and things like that should not be an issue. We handle service contracts, homeowner communications, developer services, lifestyle, which obviously is a component that should be great for you guys. This is something that we can nationally set up speakers, set up uh, events, and then turn it over to your local team to help run events, potlucks, dances, whatever you guys want to do. But we find that our national team comes up with great ideas that we source nationally, and then we're able to help you locally so your local lifestyle person isn't drawn all over the place trying to schedule guest speakers, put the, the sock cock together, etc. Uh -huh. We also handle insurance services. So obviously this is a huge issue for you guys this year, finding the, the insurance carrier that's not going to break the bank, so to speak increases are every year so we diligently go to make sure that prior to renewal we make sure that we've gone through all of your policies to see where we can save money we obviously use local brokers we would use your brokers as well to make sure that we get the best possible deal for the association maintenance this is obviously where the bulk of your budget goes if you guys are losing money so to speak on maintenance you guys can try to save money somewhere else but you're you're losing it out the big the big spot so I saw in your budget how much you guys spend on maintenance. Associa is the only management company you're gonna interview that has in-house maintenance. Okay, we're gonna use your employees, whoever you guys wanted to hire, to work under us to make sure that we continue to manage the community as is. Associa is not here to change anything. We understand the residents like the way things are going. We're here to fill in the gaps and hopefully not change anything besides what's necessary. Very much, I drive to your common areas. You guys have so much nice stuff, but if it's not properly maintained, it can obviously start to look less than nice. 
So the first thing a social would do was come through your common areas and create a checklist, a checklist of all the wants and needs to make sure that anything that homeowners are seeing that's glaring deficiencies or deferred maintenance, we can put that on a list, and then as soon as the board has the funds for it, we can action it. We're obviously real big on improvements, capital improvements. If you guys decided to redo your entire amenity center, we can general contract that. We have an in-house general contractor. So we can handle large projects and still give the board the opportunity to pick the subcontracting vendors. So this isn't like a social is gonna come in here and create a funnel for your funds. We're gonna give you guys the opportunity to pick whoever you want to manage your projects, and then we're gonna take the lead on it. And emergency services. We provide a 24 seven after hours emergency line. This can be very big during storm season. This can be very big if the owner of the unit living next to you that had something come through the window is not home. So we make sure that we run a very robust emergency line so that we can triage all of your after hours emergencies and make sure that people are safe whether they're here or if they're uh, away, we can keep track of their units. Title services. Obviously you guys have a lot going on with the crossing with real estate and utilities and maintenance and everything. We can help with just about all of that. We have in-house um, title services, where it's called community archives, so your realtor or title company could just go to our website, create an account, and download the documents necessary. There's no funnels when you're trying to sell your home, trying to get documents you need. We make it available online, so your realtor, mortgage company, etc., can go ahead and get that at their own disposal. Technology, and we understand some crowds aren't into technology. You wanna do things the way you're doing it, but if you are into technology, we have all of the latest stuff, portals, uh, board approvals uh, for all the invoices, report access, communications, you guys can submit work orders. Say you're overseas and you want to check what happened at the last board meeting, we can post all that stuff online. This will toggle to your current website, so we don't lose anything, we just add something for those who want to use it. There's also a survey feature, which is probably the most used thing on there. It's a way for the board to see what 5,000 members think about something before we bring it up at a board meeting, right? So if we know 86% of the people don't want something, the board doesn't even have to put it on the agenda. It saves you guys a lot of time for people thinking something coming down the pipe, but the board was just doing their due diligence. So the community gets riled up that something's gonna happen, when in the end the board would have known by sending out this secured password protected survey where people were at on it document storage, all the accounts payable, all the stuff you guys do now, we can do and improve it. We're obviously a very big firm. We have millions of units that we manage. We're able to probably improve some processes you guys are doing now. Obviously, the financials are a huge part of why you pick a management company. We're a billion dollar company with a B. We don't need your money. We're not going to look for ways to nickel and dime the association. Our owner is about legacy at this point. We are going to do a good job servicing your financials and we're the only management company that has a $10 million, $10 million crime policy. That's if our CAM or our employees did something malfeasant at your community, we have up to $10 million to cover that. No other management company would even sniff at that. We handle Marriott financials. So they require us to have a very robust crime policy. Next slide, please. Just how big we are. Okay, obviously you guys are 4,968 units, I believe. Most management companies have never had that many units at once of all their communities, okay? We do. As you see, we've been in business for 45 years. We have over 15,000 employees. We're in four countries, founded in Texas. We're in 44 states. We have 101 branch platforms, 300 offices, 32,000 communities, okay? 5 million people, or 5 million units, and 7.5 million people live with us. So your association is in good hands. We're not gonna be learning on the job or finding out we can't scale our services to what you do. Next. And we're A plus BBB rating. And obviously you know this is a pretty tough industry. People go straight to the BBB, straight to Google reviews. We're 4.1 on Google, even with over, almost 400 reviews. This is obviously, again, the maintenance part. This is a huge piece to your budget. If the maintenance is not well done and streamlined, the association is going to spend a lot of money and you're going to get increases without even doing new projects. Costs are going up, you need to find ways to save money, and that's us. 
So we can do it all in-house. Whether it's maintaining your community, your landscaping, all this stuff, we can get bids from your vendors or oversee employees that do it in-house. We can do roofs, we can do siding, plumbing, run all those large projects, new roads, new infrastructure, pipe fitting, everything. We, if we don't do it in-house, we have a vendor to do it. And we still give the board the chance to vote on those vendors. We will never force a vendor down your throat, ever. A social operates as its own entity. We have in-house companies, but we always declare in advance if they're one of our companies and if you want to use them or not. And the board never has the obligation to use them. We won't change any of your vendors, unless you want to. Next one. We can save you a lot of money. Now obviously, fixed incomes are probably something people are living on, and whether you're on a fixed income or not, saving money is big, right? So we have a social advantage, it's a buyer's club. No other management company has a national buyer's club. We will give you an account number, you can go to a social advantage and save money as the board for the association and as homeowners. So Staples is on there, Junk.com, Verizon, all kinds of major firms. There's deals on there from LiftMaster and other stuff. So we not just save you money with our stuff in-house, we also have partners that we've negotiated with to get you guys discounts. Elevator service, Sherwin-Williams paint. No one's gonna get this stuff cheaper. Yes. And the, real, the, the reason you really pick a SOCIA is the people, okay? You have, what, 150, 200 employees. That is really what makes up your association. If those employees were poor, the association would run poor. If the association is running well, it's because those employees care about what they're doing. We are the only management company that's a great place to work. Next slide. We are believe in family. We're the only management co company that's a great place to work. Deloitte, who does all the stock reviews and investment research, put Associa as the only management company on that list, and so going on four years in a row, this means that 80% or better of your employees think it's a great place to work. So if you guys are thinking about turning over the people who work in your community or hiring new, wouldn't you want where they're working at a place they like so they have good spirits when they're at your home, working in your building, telling you about who they work for and how things are going? Do they have good vacation time? Are they compensated on time? Do they have a way they can download their W-2? All this little stuff that may irritate an employee, that person brings it to work and now they're not giving you 100%. We make sure that's not the issue. We're the only management company that's a great place to work. We're also the best managed company. So there's 62 companies, privately managed, that made the list. We are one of them, and I'll go through that in a minute. We're an industry leading company. We have all the resources. Whether it's technology, people, processes. We've been in business 45 years. There's nothing we have not mitigated from storms to sinkholes. And we have an unrivaled health and wellness plan. And this is huge, because your employees, part of what they're doing is compensation, is the benefits. Do they have good benefits when they have issues with their health? Do they have good benefits when they have issues with their family? Welcoming a new person into the family, et cetera. Next slide. So the only, the only company that's on the designated great places to work should be huge for you guys in deciding who you're gonna go with. Because obviously, if your employees are happy, they're gonna bring that happiness to your community. This is from Deloitte. 81% of associates employees thought it was a great place to work. The industry average is 57, okay? So it's not close. It's significantly better to work for us than with the other companies. Here's just a little bit about the numbers. 91% of people say that working here, they're given a lot of responsibility. 91% say that they're made to feel at home. 88% to say that they can take time off when necessary. 87% say management trusts people who do the jobs and isn't watching over their shoulders. And 86% said I can be myself around here. We want people from all walks of life to come work with us, feel good about working with us, grow with us, grow with the community. Oh, that's just my nephew, sorry. <laughs> Our association employees are family. Okay, we really believe that. We have a great team. We have great benefits. Okay, we take care of our employees. We have long-term, short-term disability, health, dental, vision, you see it all, paid vacation time, six days, prepaid legal, health savings accounts. We even offer pet insurance if they want it. 
We even offer, starting with their first year, and we'll grandfather people in on, on how long they've been with you, where we just give them money at the end of the year, $50 for the first year, $100 at the end of the year, to just spend on things that they like, whether it's a gym membership, they want to take up photography. We want where the people really feel like associates taking care of them. Because obviously there's always new job offers. There's always some kind of challenge that makes them think about maybe checking to see what else is out there. We want them happy. We want them looking forward to the end of the year so that they think they can get another year of seniority and what comes with it. Next slide. We're about education. We certify board members. So whether or not you want to be a board member, we'll certify you in advance of the election. So when you get on the board, you know what's going on. You know what your duties and responsibilities are. You know what your limitations are as a board member. We train our employees. We'll train your employees. You have an employee who you want to start getting pool certified, we'll help them achieve that. You have an employee who wants to become a CAM, we'll help them achieve that. We do in-house training, so if there's legislative updates, we'll train your board, we'll train the managers, we'll train the staff. If they change some OSHA regulations, if they change some landscaping regulations about ponds, we'll com communicate that, set up a training, we do webinar trainings, so if members of the board wanted to know how things are run here or how to use our portals, we'll set up trainings for you. Again, one of the only management companies, or the only management company on the uh, Deloitte's Great Places to Work and Best Managed Companies. There's only 62 private companies that made this, and we were one of them. And we've made it, I think, three or four years in a row again. Associate is going to empower your board and your members. We have the resources. We have the resources. We can do what we'd like. We're with a B, so we have companies. We have partners, we have in-house resources. If the board wants to change something, we have the horsepower to do it. If the residents want to change something, we have the horsepower to do it. Most management companies are going to get into a community like this and hold on for dear life. We're gonna come in and see how we can bring stuff from other communities to your board to see will this work for you. Next. Obviously technology, again, we offer user-friendly stuff. So if you can use Facebook, you can use our portal. If you want to make a work order at 3 o'clock in the morning, instead of waiting for the, the folks to get in the office, you can go online and create a work order. You can take a photo that says, oh, I, you know, I hear this noise when I'm sleeping, or the air conditioner's loud outside, whatever it is. 24-7 ways to put those work orders in. You can be overseas. If you needed to reserve something, we have that on there. The portal is pretty much for everybody. We also are going to give the board a chance to approve all invoices so that we know there's no chance with the turnover of what happens that bills are getting paid that shouldn't be, right? So all invoices will be approved by the board. We obviously do strong room. We do the vendor portal access. So any vendors you do have, we're gonna give them a way to manage what work they've done with the community and make sure that they have it all in one square place. Again, about Town Square, that's our portal. You don't need to use it, but the folks who do use it will find out the engagement with the HOA is a lot better. They're able to see what's going on, download insurance documents, download minutes, message, message other people. They're able to get involved with what's going on in the community, do the surveys, et cetera, et cetera. The Town Square feature is a great uh, place to make the community smaller. And it's also password protected, so we know who's making these comments, so it doesn't get toxic. And we know who's making these comments, so we know they live in the community and have a vested interest in making things good. Next. We're dedicated to customer service. We answer the phone. We will make sure that that is a priority. We answer emails, okay? This is a huge part of management. We created a $4 million customer service center just to answer the phone. We know how important it is. We plan to put someone, if we're picked, we plan to put someone here to answer the phone for you so that all resident complaints, questions, requests don't go unanswered. That's a huge piece to what we feel is going to make it work for us. Next. We do other stuff too. We do associate cares, so like when Chaplain Towers fell down, we sent $10,000 to that community. We raise money for both our own members and other community members. We also have associate green, so we do a lot of stuff with recycling and ways to save the association from creating such a large footprint. Uh, we also have the great give back, where we do a lot of time to uh, spend, spend time and money on the community. We do great night, night out. So where people want to come on a Saturday and do a great night out, we can put together the 
Uh, the deal for that, we sponsor it. We also support kids. While we know this isn't a big kid neighborhood, we know that you probably have grandkids that you probably would like that there's a company out there spending money on making sure they have after school programs, cool stuff to do. If you guys had grandkids come here, we can bring the Crayos, the Crayolas, we have the, the mascot scout who can come to events. So we really are very much into the kids stuff, even if it's not something the community is focused on. An associate's commitment. Unnecessary change is unnecessary. Right now it sounds like the community is a little divided on what the future is going to, is going to be like. Is it, is it a positive of what's happening? Is it a negative? Is it neutral? Are you waiting to see? Associates committed to not changing anything that doesn't need to be changed. We're here to learn the challenges of your community. Not change anything that, that's not required or desired. We're gonna be working to keep continuity to make sure that the way you guys do it now is the way you do it in two months and in three months and in six months, unless you wanna improve it. We're gonna loyally support the decisions of this board or any other board that's elected. We work for you. We are a vendor. We don't run the community. We work for the board to implement the board's vision, okay? We are very much a bird dog for you. And we will dil diligently identify ways to save you money. Obviously, the biggest thing we can do is help you guys to save money. And over looking at your budget and the RFP, we're gonna come in significantly saving you money just on our own backs, let alone when we start looking into other contracts and other procurement assets. And then I'll open it up to questions. My, my question, and this is very simple, um, are you willing to commit to our pledge of transparency to the community? Yes, I mean, once I read the transparency, I'll be more likely to pledge, but we are 100% transparent. We will put anything the board asks us to put up on the portal or your website, and we'll make sure that any, anything that we need to disclose, we'll make sure we disclose. We are very much transparent. Okay, and my other question, you kind of actually answered it, uh, about speaking to an actual person. How do you plan to, to implement that? That would be through phone, through the online portal, or code? Yeah, so we plan to implement things as the board's vision sees. So if the board says, hey, we need a lot of phone calls, we'd like to have someone here to answer the phones, that's how we're gonna do it. If we'd like to say, hey, we'd like to have a client service center answer the phone calls until we know what we wanna do, we'll do that way. But we plan to put someone here just to do customer service for your association. That's our goal. Okay, thank you. My, my question would be um, how Oh, actually, I've got a couple questions. Part of it was um, answered with Maria's question about the call uh, center, having someone here answering calls. So if a resident is going to make a phone call, they're not going to get someone overseas. No, we don't even call people overseas. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, what is the time frame in, um, it, say it has to go to a voicemail. What is the time frame um, to get back to that resident to answer uh, the call and uh, their request for service or to correct a problem. Is it 24 hours? Is it 48 hours? It's not going to be 30 days, is it? No, yeah. our company policy is next business day. And if there's obviously a spike because something happened and everyone's calling, the, the second business day, within 48 hours. So most things are resolved by the next day, like we can at least get to you that we're working on it. Some things you obviously need the vendor to give you an update, but our policy is by the next business day. And we have internal stuff uh, called branch access tickets where we can tell when that person called or submitted the request and how long it's taken for the CAM to close the ticket. This also will alert their manager that they're falling behind and then we can devote, devote resources to the account. Okay, and one other um, question, and this kind of was posed to me at a job interview many years ago. Um, a condo community of this size, for example, can you give us an example of what kind of a problem arose that you've encountered in the past, a big problem, and um, how did you resolve it, and how long did it take to resolve it? Sure, I'm going to turn it over to Annette because Annette does the problem solving, so I'll bring Annette up here. Can you repeat your question one more time for me? 
Uh, yes. Um, a condo community of this size, uh, can you give us an example of what uh, of a problem that you've encountered in the past that um, how big of a problem it was um, and how did you resolve it and how long did it take to resolve it? Sure, that's very um, specific, but I think the biggest problem we have encountered, especially with a large community, is funding. Um, it, is, it is extremely difficult sometimes to um, get our boards to understand the importance of proactive funding for the long term and not you know, putting off the savings part to ensure that you have funds years from now. So there are a couple different mechanisms for funding. One is through regular assessments. Uh, the other is through special assessments. The other is through loans. And sometimes when an association falls short of their funding goals and they're not able to um, be able to complete all of the capital improvements or even maintenance or repair, repairs and they have deferred maintenance, we sometimes have to put together a plan to employ all three of those different funding methods to ensure that they can get caught back up. So um, part of, of what our job is, is strategic planning for the association, helping the board make assessments, of what is needed and when, and then putting together a realistic plan um, that can be phased over time so that it has a minimal impact to the residents but still meets the goals. So that would probably be the largest problem. And, and usually a plan can be put in place within the first several months of analyzing it, but sometimes the plan is spread over a period of time. Thank you. You're welcome. My question refers to uh, plant and equipment because currently the current operation has a great deal of plant and equipment here on site and can you address that? Can, can you provide those services, product services here? Yes, so obviously we would need to just get an inventory of what kind of um, items would need to be purchased. Uh, we can obviously work with the board. It's best if the board owns these items so it isn't a deal at turnover each time or it isn't um, who pays for the maintenance whatnot. So usually if, the, if you're going to own the, the equipment, we would purchase that for the association, but depending on what it is, like if it's obviously stuff that we would use primarily as the association management company, we would purchase that. But if it's something specifically for your grounds, it would be, it would be benefit the association to own that equipment. Are you aware of the dollar value of the equipment that's already here? We have not been shared that yet, so we would have to go through that inventory list and then we can obviously uh, make the accommodations. Again, Associa is not scraping pennies here. If there is something that we need to do to invest to make sure that we're properly prepared to take over your community, we can do that. Ken Holm, do we or do we not as an association currently own maintenance equipment? Who is that talking? Do we, as the association? Uh, 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 okay, for the record, okay. Who's talking? State your name. Christina Rolls. Thank you. Thank you. Do, does Parkway own the equipment? No, my, does the association or does Parkway currently own our heavy equipment? What heavy equipment are you referring well, to? I mean like lawnmowers or maintenance equipment, things that you use in day-to-day -day business. The association has no ownership mm -hmm. in any of the rolling stock that Parkway uses to maintain this community. Okay, thank you very much. And if it was like maintenance equipment that was for landscaping primarily, we could also cross this to see if there was, uh, depending on what you guys were spending on maintenance for your lawns and what it would cost to buy this equipment. This is something we would see if a vendor would be more cost effective having their own equipment and then obviously if you take the equipment charges, employment charges, maybe it would be something the board would choose to go with a third party. Thank you, sir. Do you have a place to store the equipment? A place to store the equipment? Obviously, we would need to know how much equipment it was. Um, these are all things we could easily, you know, if it was like some lawnmowers, we could find a place to put those, depending on how what it was. Now, obviously, we don't have a warehouse to store, you know, a lot of stuff here, but I imagine somewhere on site 
we could probably find a place to put a small um, shed or whatnot if you guys thought that that's all it needed. I really don't know. We really don't need. We we don't know what you guys have for equipment, so it's hard to answer that question. But if it was something that Parkway owns now, it would probably be best having a third-party landscape company taking over rather than having where you have the cost of purchasing all that equipment. Thank you. I'm Betty Cassidy. Um, do you have employees available at this time? And if not, how quickly are you able to put employees in place if it became necessary? Sure, so we have the people to start day one to run the association with the board. And obviously, blue collar folks who work in the community, we'd have to create open positions for. We don't have a bench of a landscaper or a guy who cleans floors. Now, we are the largest management firm. We do have a dedicated recruiter just for Florida. So we have no problems sending out recs and getting folks. People do want to work for us. People do want to work for you. So I don't think it would be an issue if we had the proper time to staff for these positions. Hi, my name is Nancy Bird, and I'm one of the board members. Describe your transition plan in the management of our property. Sure, so this varies depending on how the transition is desired by the board. So there's, we can do a full 45 days where we spend the time inputting all of the residents, the vendors, the accounts, et cetera, into our systems. Or we can try to just take over as you guys do it now and learn your systems. So really it just depends on what the board's desires are on what they want changed. So if there's minimal change, we can get in pretty quickly. If you guys said, hey, these items, you know, we want to change how we do banking, we want to change how we do accounts payable, whatever it is, that's what would add time because we need to have the transition time to change accounts, upload things, etc. But if the board wanted to go in with a very limited approach to change, that would be you know, basically showing us our, our facilities, where our employees are and whatnot, and what employees we need to hire for. And I would say in 45 days or less, we could be ready, especially with the way the prior management company has agreed to stay on. I don't think transition would be an issue at all. Hey Nick, can I jump in here sure. too? Um, just a, an answer on transition. We do have about a 131 point transition checklist that guides us through every step of the process to ensure that we're analyzing and evaluating all of your current documents, all of your current um, HR or personnel records, all of your current uh, processes and protocols and so the one thing I will say about a transition with a community this large this is a significant community is we have a lot of learning to do about your community this is the tip of the iceberg an initial introduction from us to you to show you what our resources are um, but this in no way defines a plan so one of the first things that we would ask of any board going into a transition with a community this large is an opportunity to meet and discuss in detail your desires as it relates to your current personnel for continuity so that we can work with the team that you have and also some time to research all of the information that you'll be sharing with us so that we can be prepared for a transition. So that's an important step. We're not quite there yet, but we're excited about the possibility of getting a chance to learn about your community. Well said, thanks again. Any other questions about maintenance, the way we do things, our folks, our size, anything? I've got another question, Stephanie Rinaldi. Um, as far as any financial um, invoices that will be you know, coming in or um, invoices going out, so invoices, say, for HOA fees, how are those all going to be handled under the new regulations? Well, that's all stuff that we work out with the board. So we don't change things without the board's approval. So and that would work with the board on crafting a plan for how you guys want to do accounts payable. Are you guys going to, going to keep the bank, same bank accounts and keep running them? Or do you want to have a cutoff point and start new bank accounts? Do you want to send out new um, payments stuff to the, uh, to the residents? Or do you want to keep things static? These are all things that when we really, you pick to marry us, so to speak, we go through on everything we need to do to make sure that it goes the way you want. We are not going to come in here with a one size fits all. We are not gonna come in here with a, this is the way we do it in other communities, this is a way to work for you. We know you guys have a big machine here that has a lot of nuances and intricacies. Our main focus was to tell you where the, where the people to pick and then allow the board to dictate how it goes. Thank you. Another question? 
questions. Hey Nick, I know that you were talking about the website earlier. With some of the new stuff laws going on, would we be able to have a website that would be secure so that it would not be open to the public to see all of our financials and all the other stuff? Yeah, that's one thing we noticed is how much public information or how much private information is out there for the public on your website. So, we, so what we would do is we would set up uh, your own private website so that any members would click on the link to take them to town square. It would require their password. Obviously, once they put in their password, it could save that in their, in their browser so they don't have to do it again. But this way, you guys have a password-protected place to do everything you may be doing on Facebook, to do everything you may be doing on Nextdoor, to do everything you may be doing on the current website. But it's password-protected. It's stored safe. It's in, it goes on into perpetuity. Board members can see and interact with the members. They know who they're dealing with. So yes, we will give you a website. You can make it forward facing if you want where the public can see it. But we'd like that if you bare minimum do the portal to have password protection so that only members see all that private information like minutes, uh, stuff that's going on in the community that may or may not uh, influence a home sale. So if you're gonna purchase a home sale right now and you logged on to your website and you saw things that were going on, would that give you pause? So these are the things we want to avoid uh, having where members feel like maybe their personal information is out there to have a password protected website. I have another question uh, I would like to direct to Mr. Colin, if I may. Stephanie Rinaldi, Mr. Colin. Um, could you please address, um, uh, Associa is willing to retain Parkway employees. Are you willing to remove the 30% fee that you have um, uh, placed on these employees? I decline to answer that question at this time. I think you need to go through the RFP process with this. This is a very nice presentation, but this is just the first meet. Uh, it needs a much deeper dive mm -hmm. and serious consideration. Oh. Just so you know, as counsel to the association, I, I really don't believe that this forum today would be an appropriate place to discuss contractual issues with the current management companies. So if we could just keep questions directed to the management companies that are interviewing, I think that would be appropriate. Thank you. Kitty Badge is here. Uh, once the RFPs are done and the prospective bidders uh, have seen the statement of work and the RFPs and make their proposals. Will the board be aware, precisely aware, of how much and cost for the plant and equipment arrangements? No surprises. Once the RFP and the bids are submitted, are we going to know the full cost of those transactions? Again, that's a contractual matter that uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Not ready to discuss it now. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Oh, this is going to be a break. And obviously, as a uh, potential candidate, Associate is definitely willing to work with prior management on any of these things, so obviously nothing that has to be discussed today. But if you did pick Associa, we are very pliable on making sure that it works for all parties. Any other questions? What communities of uh, similar size do you manage within a 50 mile radius of on top of the world? I would say Seven Oaks is probably our closest. It's uh, about 2,000 units in Wesley Chapel. And we do the, the property right next door to it as well, which is about 1,400 units. So that one manager has 3,400 units in Wesley Chapel. So that would be our closest. And I believe their budget is pretty close to the, the two of you, uh, the two put together is pretty close to you guys. Uh, Stancia at Wiregrass, yeah. We also just do Asturia, uh, which is 640 units. Uh, we do a lot of large communities. And we're not, and again, we're not just around the 50 miles here. While you'll be our bell of the ball, for sure, we do very large communities and we do very high-end communities as well. So the, the mix, the mix of the two between you know uh, our really high-end stuff like Crescent Beach Club on the beach here in Clearwater 
and some of our blue collar uh, stuff where we've learned a lot about maintenance and cost savings, we think will be a good fit here because you guys have a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, if there's no other questions, I just want to thank you graciously for inviting us today. We really appreciate the opportunity. We do feel associates the best fit for this association, and we promise that if we are selected to make sure that you, d you were happy with your decision. Thank you. today, um, Craig Vaughn, he's the CFO and founder, and poor guy just came in uh, and ran from the airport straight here, oh. so we really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Brian oh. Street, the executive VP, and Fiona DiDomenico, regional president. Good morning, everybody. It, it, it wasn't that bad until that 6 a.m. text says your flight is 60 minutes delayed. Yeah. So I was going to be here lots of time, but anyway, with uh, with their flights these days, you never know. Well, welcome. Good morning, everybody. It's very nice uh, that you took the time out. Today is a very important uh, process for the association. My name is Craig Vaughn. I am the CFO and one of the founders of Castle. My partner, James Donnelly, and I, in fact, went to kindergarten together. So oh, wow. We've known each other for a long time. He says more than 50 years. I just say a long time. I don't know why you have to put a, a label on it at this point in time. So my job right now is I'm the CFO. Most importantly, I am Castle's eye candy. So that's my main, uh, <laughs> my main function uh, at Castle these days. Uh, we have a, a strong leadership team um, uh, uh, with a Will Doug Adam. Jordan Golden is our new CEO. We have a strong leadership team. Brian Street is here today. You'll recognize him. He's our Executive Vice President of Operations, and, and part of what we're going to talk about today is the complexity of On Top of the World and, and how we're going to unwind that and make sure we get a, a good handle on it. But I will, I will tell you, we understand this is a process for you guys, a long process to go through, and, and we're here to tell you, you know, we're not here to sell you today. We're here to talk a little bit about Castle, get to know you a little bit, have you get to know us a little bit, and then we'll work through the rest of the process together. So that's kind of uh, our thinking with respect to today. 
Uh, we have local leadership. You met Fiona so about uh, seven or eight years ago, as we were growing Castle, James and I started, uh, and, his, and his brother Rob started you know, 30 years ago. We, again, we hate to put labels on it, but a long time ago. But about 10 years ago, we decided if we really truly wanted to be successful, we had to move the leadership and decision making close closer to our clients. We couldn't do it all from our main office and plantation. So we split the state into five regions and we hired a regional president for each region. Fiona is the regional president for uh, the Tampa, Orlando, what do we call it? Orlando Jobs, Jacksonville, Orlando, Tampa region. So she'll be uh, the, the front face here. Um, we also have Catherine Hinton, who's a regional director with her organization, and Shelly Jajamico, who is our account manager. She works on the transition. So that's who you have here this afternoon. I got your name wrong. Shelly <laughs> uh, D. Um, so, but we have a full team working in the Josh region as well. Uh, who are we? Well, uh, we are one of the largest pro privately held property management companies in the country. And why is that important to you? I know you're going to speak with a competitor that's a large public company. In fact, a, a 10 times our size and is a public company. So why do we think private is important? We think private is important because we have time. We don't have quarterly reports we have to make. We don't have targets we have to hit every quarter. We have time to make investments in our partnerships, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a partnership with you. We're not looking for a vendor relationship. We're looking for a partner. We want to be your partner. And we have time to invest in that partnership so that we can grow it slow and strong over time. So we don't have the pressure of quarterly earnings reports that we have to meet. Uh, so that's important. The longest tenured and most experienced executive team, that's Rob James and I, which simply means we're getting old. Um, we have partners, we have a, approximately 500 communities that we manage. 55 of them are, excuse me, 60 of them are 50, what we call 55 and better. So they used to be known as 55 and older. But when I turned 55 and I had some marketing influence, we changed them to 55 and better communities. So it's a little self-serving, but I certainly feel much better talking about it as a 55 and better community. And that brings with it some very, uh, some nuances with respect to the management, mostly the lifestyle aspect of your community, right? You want, you, you, you came here to enjoy the lifestyle of living in, in this community with all of these amenities. And so how do we, how do we help you? And we understand that. A process. We manage 50 communities with a thousand homes. You know, some of the competitors you're going to talk uh, to today manage what they call portfolio accounts. One manager managed six or seven accounts. Well, we, we don't do that. We only manage properties with full-time on-site teams. And that why is that important? There's a whole bunch of noise that gets created with portfolio management because nobody can, no individual manager. You know how old hard your manager group. No individual manager can manage kind of eight separate sites. So we focus on uh, full-time on-site properties and we manage uh, 50 of them with 1,000 homes. We have 2,700 teammates uh, right now. Um, again, we're gonna talk a little bit about our team and what is important, but really what's important is the team that you have here and the way we support that team. That's the most important things. And then we manage, there's about 400,000 residents that live in the communities that we manage. So I think we're the perfect size for on top of the world, in fact. So uh, I'm sure that you're surprised by that. Um, where we're located, uh, our, our operation is Florida-based. Our home office is in Green there. It's, a, it's in Plantation. That's where we have our service center. And Brian's going to talk a little bit about our kind of support for our team and what, what happens in the Plantation office. You, your association, this community, would be run out of our Tampa location. What we believe, we think it's really important. Castle's a culture-driven company. And what that means is we focus first on our team and our culture and our clients, and the rest will all take care of itself. So we have a constitution, our core purpose, to be proud of everything we do. How simple is that? It's very simple. Everybody understands. Brian teaches orientation uh, the first Wednesday of every month, and we take our team through our value proposition. Our vision is to enhance the lives of our customers, or excuse me, our teammates, uh, our teammates, the lives of our team, customers in the community, through the provision of unparalleled property services. That's what we focus on, the lives, what it's like to live here, what it feels like to live here, and how we can support what it feels like uh, to live here. And we have a set of values, and our goal, James and my goal, when we first set out to grow Castle, when we moved down from Canada, if you haven't picked up the accent yet, I 
It doesn't, doesn't take long, but I've given it away. I do see you have a Canadian club here, which I thought was interesting. By the way, no wine club. A hundred clubs, no wine club. I, don't, I didn't understand that. that that's a complete thing. Like, well, we're happy to fund the wine club. But you know, we're all over the wine clubs. There's 5,600 wine clubs, whatever and everything. Um, so uh, we first sat down and we said, okay, we're going to decide who we want to be as a company write our constitution, and then we're gonna set ourselves on a course to surround ourselves with people that share our values. And that's how you build, that's how you build a culture-driven organization. And frankly, that's what we've done for 35 years, is surround ourselves with people that understand our values, or agree with our values, and live our values more importantly. Oh, oh no. If you don't let me touch the technology, no, no, no. Okay, the Castle difference. Why are we different? I talked to you a little bit about uh, before we're a private company. We're industry specialists. We um, we only work in this particular space. We do large scale communities like yours. Um, we do we manage communities that are highly amenitized, similar to on top of the world. We really focus on the training or uh, the, the selection of our team and the training of our team. And then I think what, what's really important for you, and I'm going to take you at the end of this, I'm going to wrap this up with a similar circumstance that we came through with another association. We're really good at messy. James and I are CPAs. We have a great financial background. When we built Castle, we built it on a, found a strong financial operations platform. But we're good at messy. And, and, and I don't want to say you're messy, but the situation is complex <laughs> here and on top of the world. And so the idea is to unwind it, to peel back the onion slowly, one, one kind of piece at a time, so we can make sure we understand it, that again, we're partnering with you, what's the best solution, and all the different facets of the management of on top of the world. We have lots of credentials on our team, all the ones that you would normally, uh, that you'd normally expect from a property management company. Okay, industry leaders, we're very proud of the fact that we are our best place to work. Why is that important to you? Well, that's important to you for two reasons. Number one, it means we focus on our team. As I said before, our focus is on the team. We, we, we can't do this without great, great teammates on site. And number two, we, uh, we, we attract the best people in the industry, and four of them are sitting at the table, so you'll get the chance to speak with them or ask questions after. But we do attract the best talent in the industry when opportunities come up. Uh, or when we need to find somebody to fill an open spot, we are uh, we're the, we're the best there is. Okay, now we have, uh, get into. I want to get into a little bit about our philosophy with respect to property management. So we think there are three prongs to a successful property management uh, engagement: people, systems, and technology. In that order, we are not foolhardy enough to think if we don't have great people on site, we can have the best accounting system, we can have the best website, we can have the best everything. If we don't have a good team, we will not be successful. So our focus is making sure we have the best team and that they're engaged and they're trained and they can answer questions and all of those types of things are motivated. And then, excuse me, and then systems, uh, you're going to see some of the systems we have uh, in place, uh, and then and then uh, technology kind of is a special sauce that wraps it all together. How do you do it these days? And and our philosophy with respect to technology, which we'll talk about. So I'm going to just start by talking about our people. You know, our people are our most important resources. I've said to you, there's nothing more important than the team that's on the site here, and how we work with them, and engage them, and motivate them, and all, and train them, and all those types of things. We're very proud of the fact that. Um, Five years ago, I guess, we partnered with uh, Nova Southeastern University, some of you would recognize that name, I'm sure, uh, to start a minor in property management, with the goal being to bring people into the industry. Like None of us really set out when we graduated from high school saying we we'll want to be in the property management business. You kind of fall into it. I'm third, sure a number of you have those careers where like, how did I end up here? I'm not, I look in the mirror every morning, how did I end up in the property management business? But we're here, we love it, which is the most important thing. But what we decided we wanted to do is attract people to the industry. So we set up and funded a program at Nova Southeastern University to give back to the community, to start to attract people into our industry. It, was very, it worked out very well. We offer a, uh, an internship to every student in the program. And it's at our intern program, which we have, they're just winding up for this summer. And that feeds our property manager funnel and gets people to 
fall in love with Castle and fall in love with the business. And just this year, we did extend it to, actually last year, just extended it to a major, now it's major. And my partner, James, just became the head of the School of uh, Property Management at NOVA, and he underwrote that whole program. We underwrote that whole program. So we're very excited about that. And just an example, again, of what we can do as a private enterprise that maybe you can't do if you don't have the resources to do it, you're not big enough to have the resources to do that, or you have a different um, motivation with respect to where you spend your money. We have a, our, again, our home office and plantation. Uh, we'd love you to come. It's a 50 minute, an hour flight with a 50 minute delay. It's a two hour trip. Uh, but we'd love, we'd love to have you there. And I am uh, now gonna turn it over to Fiona. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So luckily I'm local. I live uh, about 20 minutes away, so I didn't have any delays. And I'm delighted to be here, so thank you for having me this morning. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how we are structured, and we have about 170 teammates at what we call our home office, and Craig spoke about the castle culture. You notice we don't call it a corporate office. It is our home office. Um, and there's a lot of little nuances that we have that affect the culture of, of working at castle and being a partner of castle. So the idea behind home office, this wheel gives you a great example. Think of you guys as the residents, the board, the committees, the clubs, in the middle of the circle there, right? You're the nucleus. And then all of our different departments at the home office are designed to support um, the team that is on site. And I understand you've got you know, roughly 200 teammates here on site. And there's all different departments at Castle that would help support the team um, to do a great job for you guys as residents and to support you know, uh, the board to be successful as well. So I won't bore you with every single piece of the pie, but to give you a, um, a couple of examples, uh, resident services is one example. So um, when we do any kind of you know, letters that are gonna go out to all of the residents, as opposed to having all of those phone calls come directly to the site office, we could, if the board chose, have those uh, calls go to our 1-800 number, which goes directly to our office and plantation. We have real live people there, not like you know robots or anything. They're real people that answer the phone. We have about 250 what we call FAQs that we would fill out about your association. You know, what day is garbage day? Who is the vendor? Um, you know, where do we get our electricity from? Uh, you know, uh, what clubs are available? What forms do we need to fill out? All of those things are in what we call the FAQ, the Frequently Asked Questions. Um, regional Chief of Maintenance, right? You have a, a very large um, you know, uh, facility here in this building. You've got multiple buildings like that. You've got a huge acreage. Um, and your property is aging like we all are. So Regional Chief of Maintenance, his job is to help support your phenomenal team that is here on site. If they've got something going on and they need a second opinion, uh, maybe they just need someone to bounce something off of, someone to come and take a look. Hey, have you ever seen this before? We're struggling, we're working with the vendor, we can't figure it out. Juan is our regional chief of maintenance. He would come and help uh, support the team. Uh, human resources, right, is a big piece of the puzzle, right, with a team of 200 associates and teammates. There's lots of things that happen. And, and human resources isn't just you know, doing, um, you know, reviews and supporting people. It's everything from training. Every person um, that works with Castle has a, um, a profile in what we call uh, our CastleNet UltraPro Castle University system. And so myself, right, I can log in. I can see what training courses I need to take. Um, if I have an interest in something, I can, you know, take a course on that. And that would be available to all, um, all of the employees. So Human Resources is doing training. They're also doing support. With a big team, life happens, right? Bad things happen in life sometimes, and the teammate needs support. Um, and that support comes from our HR department. I've seen them do incredible things in times of crisis when something happens with one of our teammates or one of their family members. So really, really important there. Um, transition team, and I know we're going to talk a little bit about that, so I won't dive in too deep, but you know, partnering with a community like On Top of the World is a big undertaking, um, to put it mildly, right? So we have an entire transition team. Their job is dedicated to bringing new associations into the Castle family. We have a very um, you know, process that we go through to do that. Um, 
the IT team, so we have a whole IT team at the home office, right, helping to support. Uh, you can appreciate if anyone in the crowd ever, you know, logged into their computer and all of a sudden it doesn't work, right? That happens to the site team as well, so they can uh, reach out to our IT team and they can connect uh, locally with them. Uh, obviously, um, your regional director, so one of the ways that Castle is um, supported is we have a, a role called regional director. Catherine is one of our regional directors. And the role of the regional director is really to be the liaison between the board, the site team here and on top of the world, and all of these different departments that we have at the home office. So the role of the regional director is to make sure that when you need one of these departments, right, that we bring that service um, to you. And then one of the things that uh, Craig mentioned, right, best people and then the best systems. So we have a lot of different what we call best practices at Castle. Not all of them would be something maybe that you would want to adopt or the board would want to adopt it on top of the world, and that's okay. It is the board's choice. Our job is to partner with the board and to say here are some of the best practices, right, that we use at Castle throughout the kingdom. Um, you know, maybe these are right for on top of the world or maybe there's something that we can do to modify and adapt some of our best practices um, to fit your needs. Technology we talked a little bit about. This screen is showing you an example. Every single one of our regional directors has an app on their phone. So when there is an emergency situation, this one is demonstrating when there's a hurricane, a storm coming, each regional director has on their phone an app. It lists every single association that falls under their purview. And uh, at the leadership of Brian and his team, they are gonna check in on the app so that everyone at home office, our CERT team at home office can see whether or not the community has checked in prior to the storm, because there's a certain protocol they have to fire, uh, fi follow prior to a storm, right? So we want to make everything is backed down, there's a whole checklist that they go off of, have all the residents been informed, et cetera, et cetera. Once all of that is done, Catherine says yes, she hits the check-in button for on top of the world, we're good to go, we're ready. After the storm, we have a protocol, within four hours, the team has to be back on site and they have to check in again with the regional director. Catherine then would go in and check in and say, yep, we're all cleared on top of the world, or guys, we've checked in, but we've got you know, major damage, we need extra support, you know, um, 30 of our team members can't get out of their homes, they're flooded in, so we need extra team members to come in from other communities outside of the area that was damaged to help. So it's a highly organized and we use um, technology to help us with that. Craig mentioned and I showed you the, the little uh, circle for the, all the different home office departments. So if you ever do come and visit our home office, which we'd love you to do, as you walk through, you're going to see each of the different departments has a screen that's monitoring where they are, what we call KPIs, Key Performance Indicators, and SLAs, Service Level Agreements. So each department has a service level agreement to the field, because remember I said home office was designed to support the field, right? So this is showing you an example of the resident services department. It's showing in the top uh, left-hand corner, 93.2% of the calls were answered um, timely, how many calls came in, how many tickets have been opened, it's all being tracked. Mm -hmm. So whether you walk through our AP or AR department, or human resources department, they all have these screens, and the idea is, again, our culture. It's not like a, ha, we caught you, you know, uh, AP department, you're behind, because sometimes, guys, the screen would be red. This is a little bit of a sales presentation, so there's not a lot of red on the screen, but sometimes there would be red, and that's part of our culture. We're very transparent, right? If AP or AR or human resources IT is behind, we want everybody to see that, so we cross-train, we can jump in, we can help, we can communicate to the field, hey, something's happened, they're behind. Um, an annual planning calendar is another uh, tool that we use. This is just kind of showing you visually the months are across the top. Down the left-hand side is all of the different things that need to happen at your community. And we go in and we gray out at the end of the month everything that has transpired. Some of my communities like to send this out to the residents on a monthly basis so that you as residents can see what's, what's happened right in the management office. Um, some of our boards just like to have this to be only a board uh, tool, but it's very transparent is my point, and you can see exactly what needs to happen. So let's say the board's trying to decide, you know, should we paint the building in July? They can look, there's a whole maintenance section, and they can look and see what projects are already scheduled for July. Maybe July's not a great month when they look at the planning calendar, right? So it's kind of laying out the business of the association 
and again, very transparent. Financial services, um, obviously we would produce a financial statement and this is just kind of showing you from a proactive standpoint. The accountant goes in and, and lists out what the variances might be on the income statement. Every Friday our managers do what's called a weekly update. The idea behind the weekly update is it's showing the board what has happened in the community at a high level. We like the weekly update to include pictures. The idea is you don't necessarily want, right, five, seven, nine board members all calling the manager saying, hey, what happened with the pool tables or the billiard tables? The board's gonna know that every Friday by five o'clock they're gonna get the weekly update and it's gonna tell them the information that they need. The manager is also gonna include what we call an action list. The action list is proactively showing to the board of directors what projects that they have coming up, where is their time being spent, and how are the projects moving forward? So the action list is gonna show whether it's open or closed, um, and uh, it's gonna show a complete by date, what was the date that the item went on the action list. Again, very transparent, right? So the board of directors can see what the manager is working on. If one board member says, gosh, there's nothing more important next week, manager, than getting the walls painted. And another board member says, there's nothing more important next week than getting the, you know, the weeds taken care of at the East Pool. And another, you know, another board member says something different. You're going to have competing, right, direction to the manager. The manager is going to take all of that information. They're going to lay it out in the action list, and it's going to be very clear to the board where the manager's focus is going to be um, for the coming weeks. And if the board has any concerns with that, then they can discuss it and redirect and prioritize. Contract renewal schedule is exactly what it sounds like: a list of all the contracts the association has, who the vendor is. When is the contract coming up for renewal? What are the terms of renewal? Um, how much notice do we need to give if we want to terminate a contract or if the board wants to do something there? And then finally, how do we know, right, from a castle standpoint, that all of these things are actually happening at your site? The regional director, led by uh, Brian's team, on a quarterly basis does an audit. So Brian puts together, him and his team put together a list of questions. We use SurveyMonkey for this. It goes to the regional director. The regional director will sit down and go through with the team on site. Um, for example, it says, have you completed your hurricane plan? Um, are all of the association's insurance policies in the folder and filed correctly? Are they up to date? Um, are there any uh, delinquent accounts? Are the pool logs being saved appropriately, right? So again, the culture is not like a, how we caught you manager doing anything wrong. That's not at all. The, the culture is more of a, these are the best practices that should be used at the site, right, to run the business of the association. Are they being used, and if not, why not? And then it's just a discussion. And this would be shared with the board as well. And then I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Street to take you through a little bit more on technology. Thank you, Fiona. Good morning, everybody. Um, you get to follow uh, all the systems with the technological kind of solution that allows us to use all these uh, systems. And as Craig and Fiona mentioned, it is all about transparency. Our whole role is to provide information to the board so that they can make decisions and we can move forward. So we basically call this kind of drawbridge and you know the castle kind of uh, analogy here. And so it's basically when the drawbridge is open, it's how well we communicate back and forth between the board and the residents. And when that uh, drawbridge is closed, we're a secure organization. Obviously we have a lot of your data. We wanna make sure that your data is always protected. We spend a lot of money on uh, different IT solutions for penetration tests and you know, with hackers that are out there in cybersecurity, we make sure that uh, from our manager standpoint all the way through our entire organization, your data is protected. And we think that's a crucial piece to making sure that we can provide these uh, different systems for the best practices here in the community. So we want to make sure that your data is protected. So just some of the uh, kind of high level technological solutions that we offer, uh, accounting, we do the ARC architectural review, covenants, violations, uh, preventive maintenance schedules, and then overall kind of vendor management. Uh, and I'll go through a couple of quick examples of how we do that. This is a, uh, we use Castle Click as our online check signing platform, so the board would have access to this. When the manager uploads an invoice, they're gonna see uh, uh, the GL codes, where it goes through the system. You can see in the corner here, there's a whole bunch of different quality control checks all the way through. So it's not just one manager uploading and has carte blanche. We have a bunch of different checks and balances all the way through the system so that you can see how those invoices are processed. And how it compares to your annual budget. 
from a payment uh, portal, you know, we're 100% paperless. The manager is going to upload this to our platform. It goes through. The board will get an email so that they can go in, ask questions, and approve the invoices. From an ARC, we use a, a, an online platform, so you would upload your documents if you're, uh, you know, doing any sort of uh, fixes to your unit, things like that. And we'll have a whole process here. You get status updates of uh, where it is throughout the system, and it allows the manager to really focus at a high level and efficient uh, process to get these ARC uh, applications approved. From a violation standpoint, typically in a big condo like this, there's not too many, but we want to make sure that there is a, a system in place if there are violations. And so we use a, a platform that basically geosyncs the violation to the individual uh, condo unit and allows to make sure that there's no uh, confusion as to you know, where this violation lies. One of the big things that we use is, we call it vendor management. Um, we, we have a platform that basically runs the checks and balances on every vendor that's going through the community itself. Are they a legit vendor? Do they have their W-9? Do they have their certificate of insurance? That's really important from just a checks and balances standpoint uh, to make sure that all the vendors are, are valid and they're gonna do the job and we can hold each other accountable. So we use a, a process here uh, for RFPs to uh, vendor compliance, that's their W-9 and, and certificate of insurance. Uh, all the way through contract maintenance and then obviously uh, tax readiness, things like that. It really allows us to hold those vendors accountable. Maintenance management, we know this is a big one here. It's uh, you know the work orders or requests. So we have a, a platform that allows the residents from their phone, from their desktop, to upload different work orders through the system. And it goes to the manager, to the maintenance team, to uh, allow for efficient uh, uh, updating of where we may need to focus our attention. As Fiona went through with the action list, some of these work orders may come and, and have to change the priority of the action because you know it's maybe there's a, a major irrigation leak or something's happening throughout the community. And you as residents are gonna kind of have some eyes and ears uh, throughout the community as well. will help us uh, manage the community a little bit more efficiently as well. And then a big one for us is communication. Uh, Craig and Fiona both mentioned you know, the transparency. We're, we're an open book. And so in order to maintain that open book, we want to make sure that we communicate. So we have some platforms available that will allow us to communicate either massive e-blasts or uh, you know, updating when there's uh, events going on. And uh, we'll take the time to really work hard to make sure that that communication flow is efficient and you're getting the information that you need. Because we want to make sure that, that you're understanding what's going on in the community, what we're working on, what the board is working on. Because again, we're, we're partners in all this. So we want to make sure that all that information uh, is, is uh, basically back and forth, a two-way street. I do want to go over the transition. This is a big one. This is a, this is a very big community, but nothing we, we haven't dealt with before. Craig's actually going to talk about a case study uh, of where we did something similar here. So we actually have an entire transition team because we want to make sure that the manager is managing. They're learning the vendors. They're learning what's going on. They're understanding which projects are happening throughout the community. So we actually surge additional resources to the community, uh, either from remotely from a you know, computer, because Stephanie and, and Shelly and Teresa, they may be working remotely, but then Shelly comes on property and helps the manager understand where we need to be. Uh, if we're looking for documents, uh, we need new bank cards, all those things. So we have a 160 point checklist of all the things that has to happen to onboard, successfully onboard a new community. So we, we basically search those resources. And then Teresa heads up the community accounting side. When you're onboarding a new community, you're, you're unraveling, as Craig and Fiona mentioned, the uh, kind of peeling back the onion a little bit. So we wanna make sure that we have the right financial information and make sure it's in a, in a great uh, position moving forward. So basically, if, if we're lucky enough to win, win your business, we'll have a whole process here. So we start with an introduction letter that will go out to all the residents introducing Castle. And then we basically kind of start through different coffees with Castle. We want, to, we want to get to know you just as much as I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions. You want to get to know us. So we set up different uh, uh, kind of meet and greets, coffee with Castle meet and greet, to make sure that we get to know you and what are some of your concerns and pain points uh, through either you know, coffee with Castle, town hall meetings, things like that. Here's just a quick representation. I know not everybody can read that from where you're sitting, but uh, it's basically just a quick representation of the Gantt chart that uh, we go through as we are onboarding new accounts. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Craig to kind of talk through how we would onboard such a, a large community like yourself. Thanks, Brian. A um, Couple comments on what Brian said. Um, I think it's important for you to know that I still carry a checkbook 
So the technology is wonderful if you can use it, but it's it's but there's other ways, right? Like you're used to doing things you've done here for 50 years, and just dropping checks in the office, that's fine. If it's filling out an ARC application, that's fine. So the technology tools are are there and available. Not all of us will avail ourselves of those tools, but that's okay. It, it, that for those, some people will love it and some people hate it, and we're, we're uh, agnostic. We will put our arms around everybody. So I think that's important from a technology standpoint that you know, know we have the tools. But you know, it's interesting, you know, I'm here kind of owner to owner asking you for your business, and we believe this is how business gets done, sitting around a room, across from a table, uh, having discussions, answering questions. The Coffee with Castle is a great opportunity. They're really town hall discussions. They're non-combative, right? They're inf meant to be informative. They're, there's no, it's not a board meeting, so there's no minutes. You don't have to do any of that stuff. We're just, we're having a dialogue about what's concerning you. And that's how we think communities get run and, and, and how solutions get implemented. So again, while the technology's there, I have a check in my pocket. If anybody, I still use the checkbook, so if anybody uh, lives with me in that regard, that's good. The other thing I think that's very important is, notwithstanding all of the support we have at our home office, again, boots on the ground, right? Who are you talking to about issues in your community? And you're talking to Shelly, you're talking to Catherine, you're talking to Fiona, who are local 20 minutes away. And I think that's hugely important because again, you can use all these technology tools to communicate sometimes is the best way to do that. So I wanna talk you through as we kind of wind up our presentation this morning and, and answer any questions at you and then get to questions. I want to take you through a, kind of a case study of an association we recently took over. And why am I doing this? I'm doing this because I think one of the questions in your mind is going to be, can, can Castle do this? Can our new company, can we do this? And so we took over our three years ago now a community uh, called White Bluff in Texas. White Bluff has 6,600 homes. It was developer controlled for 20 years before we took it over. It's got a golf course and it's got food and beverage operations. The developer owns the utility. Does that sound familiar? Yeah. Um, it's got all of these pieces, all these integrated pieces. And we met with the board and we, they were looking for a partner who would sit with them shoulder to shoulder and unwind what had happened, look at what would happen, make sure it all made sense. And so we started managing White Bluff and we did just that. It was a long process, which I told you, we don't hear, we're here for the long run. That's the, the way this worked. So we kind of took it all on and we managed with the board and we started to unwind how things got done and how costs were spent and where money went and all those questions you probably have. But the way we approached it, I think, is the most important. So one, we've done it. We've done exactly this circumstance. It's very eerily similar to what you went through. You can call this board. They've now had a, a several boards run through. Brian spent some time there. Um, and, and what's important is we have, again, we, we have the resources to go and solve it. They had 135 teammates that we had to onboard. And you have 200 teammates that you're looking for us to onboard. So what does that involve? That involves sitting down with people who are getting a check every two weeks. That is their livelihood and answering their questions and making sure they understand. Hugely important. This runs way better with the existing team. Uh, rather than coming with 200 new people. That's probably not something that could even be tackled. I, I really realistically think you're in a good position with uh, all of these teammates coming back. And we'll come, our, our Kristen Searle, uh, our, our CHRO will come out with her team and we'll engage the team and we'll talk to them about our benefit program and all of those types of things. And so it's very important that we wrap our hands around this team. We went out for a week at White Bluff. We met everybody. We helped them get on board. Some people, it's all, again, it's all, uh, computer platform, some people were uncomfortable in that space, so we sat with them and we got their information and we got them all in the program. And I'm very proud to say that we continue to manage White Bluff. Again, they just changed over their board, but this is exactly the experience you need to make sure the company that you choose has. And we'd love to be that company. Um, if, did I miss anything, anything to else to add? So we will gladly turn it over and answer, happy to answer any questions. Uh, you know, my flight doesn't leave till 7.20. There's only two flights between uh, Fort Lauderdale. So uh, you're going to got me all afternoon, whether I'm sitting here answering your questions or we're going to the bar. That's kind of the the wine club. Uh, the wine club. Yeah, we're going to start the wine club, exactly. Okay, I'll turn it over and then uh, answer any questions. My name's Betty Cassidy, and I'm interested if we needed to get bring on the 200 employees 
Are you able to do that? Do you have the employees, or how would you go about restaffing? We would we wouldn't go about restaffing if we ha and I think we have a unique opportunity to take on the two hundred teammates, so uh, or at least some su some subset of them. I think they're all going to be what I read is offered positions, but the reality is we would have to sit like we would do it in this type of environment. We'd have a team event. We bring our home office HR team here, and we would talk about Castle Seder. We're you know part of it is them selecting us as their employer. And so we need to make sure they understand the benefits from a teammate standpoint of joining uh, our, our organization and all of the benefits, all of the training, uh, making sure that they, the, you know, the payroll cycle, things as simple as that. So to answer your question, yes, we did it in White Bluff, Betty. I think we would do the same strategy, which is face-to-face -face meetings with the team, kind of by department, I think is how we did it, over and over. And, and then, again, answer any questions they have. It's, it's not a one-time come in, sign up, it's a longer process than that. To make sure everybody's comfortable, right? You get your presentation, you leave, they have a whole bunch more questions you didn't know you have. So uh, that's how we would do it. And, and Fiona's team, of course, would help. No. I can add to that as well. Um, there's always a subset as well that, for whatever reason, won't right join, and we're used to that as well, Betty. Right? So literally going out, doing hiring events, uh, planning what that looks like uh, throughout the transition process. We've done that many times uh, as well. So it, it's going to be a, my guess is it's going to be a combination of bringing some new people in and hopefully uh, inheriting and, and welcoming other people to the family, if that makes sense. Hi, I'm Stephanie Rinaldi. Um, my question would be um, on work orders. Uh, we have um, some older residents or 55 better residents that, <laughs> that um, are tech savvy, um, how would you handle um, a work order and letting that resident know that the work order has been completed if they do not have a computer or smartphone to be able to know that the work order has been completed? The, it's a great question and it would be the, the best way, which is, you know, face to face or over the telephone, right? I mean, that's, yeah, we're, we're, our team is totally comfortable. Um, and guys, not even in the 55 and better, in most of our associations, there's, a, there's always a hybrid of using technology and then the good old fashioned, you know, good afternoon, Mr. Street, you know, I understand you had a question about the, you know, the, the irrigation out front of your unit. You know, we've been out, we've inspected it, you know, notes on their door, there's there's a bunch of ways, right, to do that. Um, so I think it's very important that, that everybody understands we're not gonna come in and rock your world. We also wanna see what, like, what are you doing now when someone does a work order, right? Mm -hmm. We don't wanna reinvent the wheel. We wanna make sure transition is comfortable for the team and most importantly, the residents, right? And I have a follow-up uh, as far as work orders go. Um, what's the timeline for it? Is a resident going to have to wait um, 30 days to get a response uh, that the work order has been looked at? And also, I do like the idea, if you cannot reach someone by phone or face-to-face -face of leaving a note on the door that their work order has been looked at um, and taken care of. So that speaks exactly to what we were talking about, the service level agreements, right? So we would, again, want to be very transparent uh, with the resident and working with the board to come up with service level agreements so that you as residents know if I submit a work order, whether it's online or I phoned it in or I stopped Johnny in the, you know, on the, on the golf cart and said, hey, I have this issue, right? That's going to get entered into our system. And then we set up, agreed upon, a response time. So typically it's at least a 24 hour. When you do it um, through the app, you get an immediate response and you can track it. Um, and then, but still, that doesn't mean it's fixed, right? So it's just an acknowledgement. Then we have to have agreed upon service level agreements to say if it's a, you know, a landscaping issue, it's going to be X number of, you know, business days or hours. If it's a true maintenance issue, but we want the team to respond to the residents to acknowledge, right, that we've received the work order and what is going to happen within 24 hours. Thank you. Within 24 hours. Katie Badges here. Uh, will all of your uh, day-to-day -day managers be located here on site and total, totally dedicated to on top of the world. 
Yes, as, as uh, Craig was mentioning, so that is what we do. So we manage communities where the team is physically on site. So all the managers, all the administrative staff, they are dedicated 100% to your community. We are president says property management is an outdoor sport. You have to be present and in the community to be able to effectively manage the community. So we, you know, we focus on you can't do this remotely. That's for sure. So everybody full time on site to feel this Catherine Chambers, do you have your own equipment to bring, and where will you store it? Landscaping and things like that. I'm sorry. Do you have your own landscaping equipment and things like that? And where would you store it? Well, we would store it here if there's a facility here to store it, which would be our assumption. Uh, so we, we would have it. We would have equipment stored here on site so the team can use it, not stored remotely. Okay, so you would bring it here. We would bring it here, yes. yes. <laughs> That's a great question. So yes, so we did talk about the resident services department that fields the phone calls. And then basically at 6 p.m. it goes to an after hours 24-7, uh, which basically we want to use as, as an emergency. You know, kind of fire, flood, blood type situation. Um, you know, hopefully no blood, by the way. Uh, but basically, or fire. But it's it, we want to make sure, and then in the way that that works. Yeah. So, but the way it works is that they receive that phone call and immediately text the manager and call the manager. And within a short period of time, if there is no response received from the manager for whatever reason, it's two o'clock in the morning, uh, then the regional director gets the phone call and the text message. If, again, vacation, what have you, it goes right to the regional president. So we have the escalation in place so that every emergency is addressed quickly and timely, and then we track to understand what happened. So all the way through, we're, we're running all the tickets. You saw the, the screen of the metrics. We get that as well for the after hours call. Great for question. The Thank this you. I have one more question. Um, do you only work with vendors or do you do anything in-house? So both actually, right? So it, depending on what the, um, what the issue is, the job that needs to be done. So most of our associations have some form of a maintenance team on site, the majority of our associations. That maintenance team is doing you know, the lighter maintenance work, drywall repairs, you know, fixing faucets, you know, that type of thing. If you've got to uh, do something that requires a license, like an electrician, something like that, uh, you know, a really big, you know, job that's going to take dedicated people for weeks, that typically would be a vendor, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Kenny, may I just look in? Back to the question of after hours emergencies, are those uh, staffers going to be physically located working